All right, continuing our discussion of double integrals with polar coordinates, the rest of this video will be dedicated to working examples of actual integrations. So for our first example, let's take a look at finding the volume above the xy plane under the paraboloid z is equal to 16 minus x squared minus y squared, and the area within the cylinder, x minus 1 quantity squared plus y squared equals 2, 1. So, um, I mean, we could try and do this in uh, the rectangular coordinates, but don't. It's much harder. It's going to be better if we use polar coordinates. As you'll see, anytime that there's a nice symmetry or around the axes, or we're dealing with very, very circular things, and that cylinder is definitely a circular domain of integration, polar coordinates are going to be the way to go. So let's convert both these functions or expressions into polar coordinates. So I'll just use the fact that I've got this already written here. I'll factor out one, negative one rather, to show that we can convert z into 16 minus r squared. And now we got to do a little bit more to convert our other, um, our domain of integration. Okay, so for x minus one, quantity squared plus y squared equals to one, we're going to replace x and y with their polar counterparts. So r cosine of theta plus 1 quantity squared plus r sine of theta all squared is equal to 1. We're going to go ahead and give myself as much real estate as we can have here by continuing this calculation over there. This is going to give us r squared cosine squared of theta uh, plus 2r cosine of theta plus 1. Rather sizable mistake here. That is a negative, which is going to make some changes. Negative, negative, positive. All right, that's better. Uh, plus r squared sine squared of theta equals to 1. Hey, let's rearrange this and uh, do some sneaky factoring to pull out the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to have r squared factored out of cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta, combining those underlined terms above. And that's nice because that becomes 1 by the Pythagorean identity. Uh, minus 2r cosine of theta plus 1 equals to 1. Well, you know what? Let's just subtract that one over and make that equal zero. And what's our goal here? Well, our goal when we're working with polar stuff is to solve for r. So I'm going to just let this r squared hang out on the left, move the negative 2r cosine squared to the other side, to the right, and multiply by 1 over r on both sides, or divide whatever you like, gives you r is equal to 2 cosine of theta, and we've done it. So now, before we go on to a new page, let's see if we can't figure out the limits of integration. So this is this whole, um, this everything here in blue relates to the blue um, cylinder to the left, which happens to be we're integrating over the intersection of that cylinder with the z equals zero plane. In other words, that circle that's kind of shown in the dotted line there in the xy plane is going to be the domain of integration here. So let's look at this thing. If you plot this thing, and I encourage you to pull up Desmos and practice typing it in, you will see that this in the usual orientation, x, y, like we like, we're going to have positive 1, negative 1, and not quite perfect, but good enough, 2. r is equal to 2 cosine theta gives us that circle. And so thinking, OK, what are our slices going to look like? Well, you're going to start here, headed downward, and not really have anywhere to go. And then you're going to take slices like that. And as you do, you're going to let theta vary, and it's going to generate the entire domain of integration. So what happens? The radius is going to start at 0 
and end at two cosine of theta, our boundary there. What about theta? Well, down here we've got negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And now this is something you definitely should confirm with Desmos that that in fact does generate the entire um, region that we're after, and it does. Okay, that gives us enough information to set up our integral because here we have our limits of integration. So let's uh, write that down. Our integral is going to be to find the volume above a surface, z is equal to or f, you integrate over the region, you integrate the surface z with respect to area. So in our case, we're gonna let theta vary from negative pi over two to pi over two. Or we're gonna let r vary from zero to two cosine of theta. Uh, now, before we go any further, let's get the entire area differential in there before we go ahead and put our function in. r dr d theta, noting that sure enough, our limits of integration agree with the order of the differentials and we haven't forgotten our oh so important r that comes along with the area differential in polar coordinates. Now our, our function has become 16 minus r squared in polar coordinates. Okay, now it just becomes a matter of calculating this thing out. First, we'll do the inner integral. So we're gonna go from zero to two, r is equal to zero to two cosine of theta and we're integrating 16 r minus r to the third power dr. I went ahead and distributed that r so that we've got it nicely ready to go. 16 r integrated gives us eight, uh, 16 over two, so eight r squared uh, minus one quarter r to the fourth power evaluated from r equals to zero to two cosine of theta. All right, let's plug that in and see what we get. Um, that's gonna give us eight times r cosine of theta squared minus one quarter uh, times two cosine of theta to the fourth power. Tidying this up, oh wait, we better plug in for r is equal to zero, even though it's gonna give us nothing. Uh, eight zero to the second power minus a quarter times zero to the fourth is still gonna be zero. So yeah, that's all zero. All right, so what do we get? We get eight r squared cosine squared of theta minus, well, two to the fourth is gonna be something sizable, um, uh, maybe 16 and uh, and divide that by four to get four, and that gives us four cosine to the fourth power of theta. And that is, that is correct. Okay, so now, wait a minute, that's not correct. What happened here? Ah, here we go. Fixing in red by mistake. That's not r cosine of theta, but rather two. My two became an r and that caused something to go awry. So two squared is four, four times eight is 30. Two, and that now is actually correct. So we'll continue on a new sheet of paper for our outer integral. Outer, I'm a, I wanna maximize my real estate. So I'm just putting up here, we're doing the outer integral now. And so my outer integral lets theta vary from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And it integrates the result we just got, 32, cosine squared of theta minus four cosine to the fourth power of theta d theta. Okay, here we go. Firing up the good old half angle formulas. I'm gonna, I wrote my bounds down thoroughly and properly once, my limits of integration. So I'm just gonna leave them off for a while and come back to them because we're gonna have to do some, some algebras and some calculus. All right, so we've got 32 times half angle formulas applied to cosine squares give us one half plus one half of cosine of two theta um, minus 
four. You know what? That's kind of ugly. So I think I'm going to go ahead and break this into two integrals. Minus, I'm just going to pop the four outside as well. And now instead of cosine of four theta, I, I know what I'm going to need to do here. I'm going to need to apply the half angle formulas twice. So I'm going to write this as cosine of theta times cosine squared of theta. I think I said cosine of theta. Cosine squared of theta times itself twice. All right. So here we go. Quite a bit of calculus uh, and algebra and trig going on. All right, so I'm going to multiply that 32 through by 1 half to get 16 plus 16 cosine of 2 theta d theta for my first integral. At that point, that's a, something we can absolutely do. The second integral minus 4 cosine uh, squared of theta times cosine squared of theta. Well, I'm going to factor out that 1 half from my this is not the same thing. I'm just highlighting here to show that I can just factor one half out of that uh, application of the half angle formulas to write this as one half plus cosine of two theta times doing it again, one half times one plus cosine of two theta d theta. Why is that nice? Because then I can go ahead and pull those halves out in front of my integral and that's going to tidy things up a little bit. This is going to be equal to 16 theta. Sixteen theta. Half a second. I'm I think I found a mistake in my notes, so I'll be right back. All right, crisis averted. The mistake didn't end up causing the problem to be wrong, but it was a mistake nonetheless. Okay, uh, I had a negative right here and it. It's definitely positive. Uh, what has derivative 16 times cosine of 2 theta? Well, 8 sine of 2 theta does. And if you need to, just go ahead and do a quick, uh, a quick u substitution there to see that. All right, so now factoring these, let's see, factoring these 1 half times 1 half is 1 quarter. Pull that outside, multiply it by the 4, and you're going to be left with just negative one out in front of the second integral. Now let's go ahead and multiply those, uh, distribute these two. Uh, we're going to get one times one is one, and then plus we're going to get two cosines of two theta, and then we're going to get plus cosine squared of two theta d theta. Okay, now things are looking better, but I see that we're going to have to apply the half angle formulas. I don't know, a third time does it seem like? If you didn't have to do this in Calc 2, um, you're lucky. Although, maybe not, actually. All right, once again, um, you let's slap those in a parenthesis. D theta, uh, 1 half plus 1 half cosine. Careful, not of 2 theta but you double the input every time. So it's gonna be four theta there. Okay, now we actually are ready to integrate this stuff. So one with respect to theta integrated is theta. Two cosine of two theta is the derivative of sine of two theta. Uh, integrating one half, you get one half theta. And then integrating one half cosine of four theta, you get one eighth cosine of, oh, not cosine, but sine of four theta. Now, we haven't written down our bounds for a while, but this sure is a definite integral. So let's just put that vertical bar with those dots to remind ourselves we got to evaluate this after the fact. So, um, Nothing you guys can't handle. So instead of writing this out and combining like terms, I'm going to skip to the punchline that after you combine a bunch of like terms, you're going to get 29 over 2 theta plus 7 sine of 2 theta minus 1 eighth sine of 4 theta. 
And you're going to evaluate that from theta equals negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And I think this is my last page for this. Maybe I needed a fourth slide for this example, it would seem. But I think we have just enough room to squeeze it out here. So for pi over 2, we have 29 over 2 times pi over 2 plus 7 sine of twice pi over 2 is just pi minus 1 eighth sine of 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi. That's our first expression. Now we're going to plug in for negative pi over 2, and we're going to get 29 over 2 times negative pi over 2 uh, plus 7 sine times 2 pi over 2 times 2 is pi. That's a negative pi um, minus 1 eighth sine of negative 2 pi. All right, what if these things are going to be 0? Well, sine of 2 pi is 0. Sine of pi is 0. Um, sine of 2 pi is 0. Sine of pi is 0, which is why my earlier mistake of having a negative didn't end up impacting the correct answer. Uh, putting all that together, you're going to end up with 29 over 2 times pi, which is about 45 point-ish decimal places. All right, that was our first example. Let's keep going because there's a few more. All right, our next example is labeled letter G because why not? We're going to integrate the function x or eight times the quantity x plus y over the region. It looks like uh, the region between the circles centered at the origin of radius one and uh, Ooh, careful here, radius three, not radius nine. Remember that in Cartesian coordinates, this is uh, the radius is r squared. Or just do the math and convert it. Let's see, let's just do that. We've got r squared less than or equal to nine, less than or equal to one, uh, gives us r less than or equal to three, less than or equal to one. Okay, so there's a little bit of hand waving there. You can't really take square roots or raise to the one half power when you have inequalities, but I'm just thinking of the polar grid in the background. And I think you're all savvy enough to handle that as well. Okay, so the last thing is we've got x is greater than zero. So what does this region look like? Okay, so here's our region of integration. Well, we've got radius three, we've got radius one. So we're gonna have two, circles there. We want x to be greater than zero, so x to be greater than zero, not y is greater than zero. Maybe I meant y is greater than zero. I definitely did this problem with y greater than zero, so let's go ahead and just correct that and make that y is equal to zero. All right, with that corrected, what are our limits of integration going to be? Well, we're going to start here. And as usual, we're going to let theta vary. So I think theta starting at 0 and going to pi seems like a pretty good choice. And what are our slices going to look like? I don't want the red bit. I just want the blue bit. And so it looks to me like r is going to vary between 1 and 3. So that's correct. We got r varying between 3 and 1, and theta varying between pi and zero in the other order. So now we're ready to set up our integral. No, we're not. We have to convert this thing into polar coordinates. So this function is going to be f is equal to eight times r cosine of theta plus r sine of theta. And I'm working vertical here to kind of conserve a little bit of uh, screen real estate. This can, I can factor out that r and make it 8r times cosine of theta plus sine of theta. And cool. That way I've got all my r stuff together and all my theta stuff together. If you want to, you can even pop that theta stuff outside the r integral and just leave it into the theta integral. Okay. So let's, uh, let's actually set up the integrals now. So our first integral, as always, is going to, well, not always, but my choosing to, theta is going to vary from 0 to pi dr. And when I add dr, I always remember to add my r area differential extra r. r is going to vary from 1 to 3. And the function we're integrating is, now it needs a set of parentheses here, 
because we've got that extra R in there. We've got eight R. I guess it didn't actually need that parentheses because it already had one. It already meant multiplication, but they don't hurt anything. Well, let's see. You know what? I'm going to be sneaky here and I'm going to save myself rewriting something. I'm going to put that R right over there like that. Okay, so now we're ready to integrate this thing. So inner integral. My inner integral is going to be from r is equal to one, two, three. And I am going to treat this, I'm going to ignore the theta expressions up there. I'm just going to integrate the stuff that's not a constant, 8r squared dr. That's going to give me 8 thirds r to the third power evaluated from r equals 1 to r is equal to 3. When I do that, I get 8 thirds times 3 to the third power minus 8 thirds times 1. And put that together, you're going to get 208 over 3. Now, 208 over 3 is not that bad of a thing, so we'll just go ahead and say, you know what? Let's do the outer integral. Well, the outer integral, we would stick that 208 over 3 into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it out front because it is a constant, 208 over 3. And then our outer integral is going to let theta vary from 0 to pi and integrate the theta stuff, cosine of theta plus sine of theta. And this is only OK because they weren't mixed terms. There were two things being multiplied together there. So. Let's see what we got. Integrating this, we get 208 over 3 times uh, what has derivative of cosine? Positive sine has derivative. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, cosine has derivative of positive sine minus. Um, what is derivative of sine? Well, sine is sort of the derivative of cosine, so negative cosine of theta. We're going to evaluate this stuff from theta equals 0 to pi. All right, finishing this rig out, we got 208 over 3 uh, times sine of pi minus cosine of pi minus 208 over 3 times sine of 0 minus cosine of 0. Well, sine of pi and sine of 0 are both 0. Cosine of um, pi is negative 1. So we're going to have negative 1 there. And we're going to have 1 there. OK, so that looks like we're going to have 208 over 3. And then I got a negative 208. And then I have a times a negative 1 on the inside. So we're going to have plus 208 over 3 is going to give us 416 over 3. And if you prefer, there's a decimal 136-ish. But let's just leave it there. All right, one last example here to finish things out. We're going to take a look at what I've decided to call example H. We want to find the area outside of the circle of radius three halves, one and a half, and inside this uh, r is equal to two plus two cosine of theta shown right there. OK, so let's have a look at this thing. We'll get the graph pulled up in the background. We don't need it yet. But oops, no, we didn't. We just failed. It's OK, though. OK, let's figure things out. Well, so let's uh, let's just look at our picture and, and decide how to proceed here. So what is a slice going to look like? Oh, we don't want the bit inside of. Well, first things first, I, d I think we should just use symmetry. I think instead of finding this entire thing, we should find this area and double it because we're after the, the stuff inside the blue guy, 
but outside the red guy. Okay, so that helps. So a slice is gonna look like it's gonna come out from theta equals zero. And I'm only interested in the blue bit, the bit that's inside this, this region. Well, so the lower part of that, that is r is equal to three halves. The upper part of that is r is equal to two plus two cosine of theta. So we've got that. We know now that our, our r bounds are three halves less than or equal to r, less than or equal to two plus two cosine of theta. So now we have to tackle our theta bounds. So how are we gonna find our theta bounds? Well, I, the lower bound we can just do from inspection, it's definitely theta equals zero. So lower theta equals zero. Theta starts out at zero, let's make that a theta. So now we gotta find our upper bound. Where does our upper bound happen? Oh, what color haven't I used yet? This purple. Our upper bound is going to end right here. And I know that purple is not the easiest to see color. Uh, I don't know, I'll just use black. There we go. So yeah, it would, we, would, we would send a slice out and along that angle direction, and then it would just be a very, very small point right there. So how can we find that point? Well, that's the intersection of those two curves. And so I'm gonna set this R equal to this R. R is equal to R gives us three halves is equal to two plus two cosine of theta. And then that tidies up to negative one half equals two cosine of theta. And then that's negative one quarter equals cosine of theta. And then theta is equal to arc cosine negative one quarter. Nice. If I want to fire up a calculator, it's 1.8235-ish, which we can uh, we can verify by thinking, okay, pi over two, if I did that as and calculated that as a decimal, it's about 1.57. And then three pi over four over here, three pi over four is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.36. And so sure enough, if I extend this angle out, getting a value of 1.82, it seems pretty reasonable it's, as we progress anti-clockwise, it, it seems reasonable. Sometimes I find that helpful when working with radians. Okay, so now let's set up our integral. Remember we decided to use symmetry. So our area is gonna be equal to twice. Well, first we're gonna let theta vary. We're gonna let theta go from zero to um, arc cosine of negative one quarter. I mean, we're allowed to use Desmos and calculators you can type stuff into, so we may as well use the exact value. You can even just assign A as equal to that, and then all you have to type in is A over and over. Okay, uh, then the inner integral, let's R vary from three halves to two plus two cosine of theta. We are integrating, we're after area, so we're just gonna integrate the area differential, which is r, don't forget your r, dr d theta. Now on the next page, we'll tackle this integral. Our inner integral is the integral from r is equal to three halves to arc cosine of negative one quarter. of r dr giving us one half r squared evaluated from r is equal to three halves to um, arc cosine of negative one. No, 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 not arc cosine of negative. I'm sorry, guys. Let's, uh, let's fix that. It's not arc cosine, it's definitely not. It's r is equal to two plus two cosine. There we go two plus two cosine of theta. Figuring that out, we got one half times two plus two cosine of theta squared minus one half times three halves quantity squared. That's going to give us 
Well, this is similar to the last example we saw where we're going to need to distribute some stuff out. And so I'm going to do a little bit of the algebra on this page to kind of get this thing ready for the second integral, the outer integral. So nine eighths there. And then, well, what else we got? We could times that. that we could uh, just go ahead and tidy things up here. That's going to become a two. That's a four. And that's a two now. And then from there, we're going to... I can combine that two in that nine eighths negative to get 23rd over eight plus four cosine of theta plus two times one half plus one half cosine of two theta. Again, just preparing for the integration. I know I can't integrate cosine squared. I have to use the half angle formulas. And so I'm going to do it that way, getting it ready. Uh, so what else can we do? Um, well, we can make these both one. And then 28, uh, 23 eighths plus one is going to give us 31 eighths plus four cosine of theta plus cosine of two theta. And that's our new integrand for our outer integral. So let's put that little guy in our outer integral and our outer integral. So our outer integral, this is the one where we're going to let theta go. Theta equals zero, and it's going to range from zero to arc cosine of negative one over four. We're going to integrate 31 eighths plus four cosine of theta plus cosine of two theta d theta. Now you've seen me do this integration enough that we're going to take some skips a little bit. Uh, 31 eighths times theta plus for sine of theta plus one half sine of two theta, all evaluated from uh, theta equals zero to arc cosine of negative one quarter. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is arc cosine of negative one quarter is not a common angle. It's gonna we're just going to work with decimals. So this would be one where you can't get a nice exact answer. Uh, or that exact answer would just be in terms of our cosine of negative a quarter. So rather, I'm going to define this to be f of theta using Desmos, and I'm going to replace theta with x. And then I can just type for the evaluation f of arc cosine of negative one quarter minus f of zero. And that will give me something to the tune of, I don't really mind, but it's going to give me 10.6969 rounded off. It goes on continuously forever. Uh, not continuously, but just forever. But remember, was that the entire integral? No, our integral was double this conclusion. Area equals two times our integral. Well, the result of our integral was this expression. I'm going to name it b. And so it's 2b, and it's in the neighborhood of 21.3938. And if we go up here, we can kind of, kind of convince ourselves that that's reasonable. So this b area is this shaded area. So let's kind of count the squares. One, two, three, four complete ones, uh, five mostly, six, seven, Okay, I kind of buy that that's about 10. Uh, and uh, then if you double that, it's going to be something in the neighborhood of 20. So it seems fairly reasonable. Now to conclude this, I just want to fire up this calculator and show you how you can use Desmos to evaluate complicated expressions real quickly. So yeah, as you see down here in this field, sorry, the keyboard's going to pop up and get that out of there. You see that I, I took the result of the the outer integral before I doubled it and wrote it out as f of x is equal to that stuff. And then I could just plug in. I, I didn't, I wanted to, I had a is equal to arc cosine of negative one fourth before. So the result of that is going to be b is equal to f of a. So that's f of arc cosine of negative quarter minus f of zero. And there's that calculation. And those labels should match what I did on the slide. And you see that you got 21. And if you count up those squares, you could probably convince yourself that 21 is a reasonable answer. And that brings this lecture to a close.